Read what up, boys. Shout out to the Lost Boys. Y'all stay intact. All right, peace. Everybody here in the building. Read BBS. BBS. Pound for pound, the best fighter in the world is. Is it my dude? Is it my bruh? Is it my Tomodachi? Now, Oya Inoue? Is it Terrence Bud Crawford? Or is it Alexander Rusi? Now, for a hot minute, for a hot minute, Inoue and Bud were 1A, 1B. Play some where you want with Usyk a firm third. Well ahead of the rest, not quite with the best. But it's all about recency, right? It's supposed to be about recency, right? So inquiring minds want to know. Inquiring minds got to know. Regarding pound for pound rankings, does Usyk Fury change anything? Does it change anything? Did Alexander Usyk and his undeniably lofty, ultimately successful pursuit of the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Did Usyk's feet, did it make you feel differently? Did it make you feel differently? Because what we do know, what we do know is Usyk is, is very field. He is very field. Did his performance versus Fury sway some opinions? I need to know. I got to know. Now, recent seat. Recent seat. Rule number one. What have you done for me lately? Rule number one. Fighters fight. Fighters fight, right? So for me, 365 days from your last bout, uh, that's the deadline on my official, unofficial pound for pound rankings. Official. I said what I said. And with Bud Crawford's last fight being July 29th, 2023, and his next fight not uh, being scheduled until August 3rd, 2024, Bud Crawford simply cannot be regarded as the best fighter in the world, pound for pound. For now. For now. <laughs> inactivity, bruh. We can't reward inactivity. Same with John Bones Jones and fucking uh, UFC. Motherfucker mad because he ain't pound for pound. I'm like, motherfucker, you fought like once in four years, bruh. You can't just hold on to it like that. Fighters, fight. That's rule number one. Fighters, fight. Now, with that established, though, can you fix your lips? Can you fix your lips to say, can you wrap your mind around the concept of Alexander Usyk catapulting himself from his very comfortable and well-deserved, reserved VIP spot in boxing's top three pound for pound, all the way up to the top spot, all the way up to the top spot, to my Tomodachis, to my fellow Naoya Inoue fans who have supported me tremendously. I love and appreciate you so much for your support. Please continue to show and prove for me. I'll continue to uh, put out the best content that I can in the way that I do. Where do you have Usyk ranked pound for pound? Talk to me. Subscribe. Comment. Remember, sharing is caring. Love tap and or bitch slap that like button for you, boy. And shout out to the homies at fightbeat.com. Can you step to this? Chris Algieri, Pauli Malinaji, and uh, Tim Bradley are certainly, certainly convinced that Usyk has done enough to uh, become the man, to be the man, to vault and catapult himself to top status pound for pound. And I quote from Algieri, that's a misnomer that a heavyweight can't be in the pound for pound conversation. At heavyweight, you can be so much bigger than your opponents. You can use those weight and size advantage assets to overpower someone's skill set. But Usyk's not that guy. He's got the skills to pay the bills, man. He's smaller, but he fights heavier guys. He should go up spots in the pound for pound rankings being at heavyweight because it only takes one punch to end about. It's not like fighting guys at 122 pounds. <laughs> Algeria specifically, specifically mentioned 122 pounds, the weight of my dude, my bruh, my Tomodachi now Oya anyway. But okay, okay, we move on to uh, Pauli Malinaji, who stated, this is the only weight class where you do have such a weight disparity. 
Usyk's a smaller guy beating bigger guys, which is why the pound for pound list was created in the first place. Fair point. Fair point. Tim Bradley, to add in, stated, I put him at number one, absolutely. What he was asked to accomplish that night was a fantastic performance. You had Tyson Fury with all the advantages, the experience in the heavyweight division, the weight, the reach, and Usyk was able to over- overcome all of that. It was not that commitment. It was that commitment to his game plan, his commitment to the body, the fact he fights at a high revving pace, Fury couldn't keep up. Usyk finding that shot, standing still and trading with Tyson Fury, catching him in that sequence when he hurt him in the ninth round, Usyk hit this guy 20 times unanswered. Only two men, only two men in the history of boxing have been undisputed champion at cruiserweight and at heavyweight. The real deal, Evander Holyfield and Alexander Usyk. I repeat, only two men in the history of boxing have been undisputed champion at cruiserweight and heavyweight. Real deal, Evander Holyfield and Alexander Usyk. Rinse, repeat. Rare, we call things rare, but rare doesn't quite encapsulate that feat for me. It just doesn't. For me, maybe not for you, but for me, level of performance, performance, level of performance is often neglected. Yes, yes, just winning, that should be enough. Winning should be enough. But how? How did you look in the process of winning? That matters. Sorry, but that matters. And I I need you to consistently look like the best fighter in the world pound for pound. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to show it, to display it. It's one thing to say it. It's another to display it. And that's where Usyk falls just short for me. Consistently looking the part. As epic As his win over an undefeated Tyson Fury, regarded as the best heavyweight of his era, as epic as that win undeniably was, what about one fight prior to? What about one fight prior to? Daniel Dubois? Daniel Dubois? I can't unsee that. I can't unsee that. I can forgive, but I can't forget Usyk milking extra time on what was in actuality a clean, legit body blow. It just was. It was. And uh, I'm not holding a grudge or nothing, but that's not very becoming of the best fighter in the world, pound for pound. Hold up, but it just isn't. Uh, was anyone impressed with Usyk's performance versus Derek Chisora? Do you rewatch Usyk's heavyweight debut? Debut against Chaz Witherspoon? Do you rewatch that shit often? Yeah, I don't either. In a weird way, Usyk, him at heavyweight, it's kind of like Michael Spinks was at heavyweight. Less impressive than he was, obviously, at his lower weight, but still effective. But hell, even Spinks was knocking people out. Hell, he knocked Jerry Clooney out. You know, Stephen Tang's dad at heavyweight, coming from light heavyweight. So I'm not knocking Usyk, but when you say to me, best fighter in the world, pound for pound, yes, I see the size he's giving away, but I still need you to look the part. And it can't just be for a handful of rounds against Tyson Fury. You know what I'm saying? You won the fight, but I don't know if you're winning the pound-for-pound war, so to speak. So for me, for me, right now today, my dude, my bruh, my Tomodachi, now Oya Inoue, is the best fighter in the world pound-for-pound. Critics, y'all want to harp on getting dropped by Deary in the first round? Well, I just aired Usyk's Dirty Lines before you. And bringing it all back full circle to Bud Crawford, who's fighting this weekend. Uh, mean Machine dropped him. Another Eastern European dropped Bud uh, already. See how this works? It's all about resume, accomplishments, moving up in weight classes, recency, and yes, and yes, level of performance, performance. It all matters. So in summation, I'm not here to shit on anybody's pound for pound list. I'm just presenting mine. Again, Bud fights this weekend, addressing the recency issue, which has bumped him down to three, to three on my personal list. But we'll revisit it soon. So for me, it's now Oya Inoue one, Alexander Usyk two, Terrence Bud Crawford three. 
for me. Read BBS, BBS. Blackbird Sugar, Bachelors in Boxing Studies. Televisio, Fred Sanford of the Fisting Arts. When all is said and done, there's nothing left to say or do.